Welcome to the Here's My Story channel. I'm Rosa. I barged into the restaurant. Where's my dad? I asked someone from the staff. I started crying. Dad! Daddy! My stepmom, Claire, was with him. He was perfectly okay. Then he collapsed. Oh, God, please help my husband. I can't live without him, she said, bursting into tears and hugging me. They put my dad in the ambulance. With tears in my eyes, I watched the ambulance disappear. Lorenzo, the head chef at the restaurant, was standing next to me. Your dad never skipped a day of work in 17 years. He opened and closed the restaurant himself every single day. I'm sure he will get back on his feet in no time. No one can keep that Italian workaholic at the hospital for too long, he said, trying to console me. I went to the hospital with my stepmom. Our patient is still unconscious, and unfortunately, there's nothing we can do for now, said the doctor in my dad's room. When Claire said, please fix my husband, the doctor replied, we need to find out what is interfering with his nervous system. Otherwise, he might never make it out of the coma. My stepmom and I left the hospital. I cried on the way home, but she didn't look as sad as she was before. She called Chef Lorenzo. I will manage the restaurant from now on. I want to see the whole team there at 8 a.m., she said. My dad had gone into a coma only a few hours earlier. Now my stepmom seemed as though she had forgotten. Is this the time to think about the restaurant? And what do you know about running a restaurant? Lorenzo has been working with my dad for years. He should be the one managing that place, I said. How dare you? I don't remember asking for your opinion, Claire snapped at me. Then she frowned and ordered, your dad has been too lenient with you. I think you need some discipline. You're going to be at the restaurant early tomorrow as well. At the restaurant, but I have school, I replied. She said with a smirk, <laughs> you can forget about school. I will take care of your education from now on. The following day, I began working as a dishwasher at my dad's restaurant. Everyone who worked there knew and loved me since I was a kid. They were all very sad for me. Lorenzo kept saying, your dad will get better and come home soon. I'm sure he will deal with your stepmom then. I washed dishes all day. I was so exhausted. I ran to the hospital as soon as the restaurant closed. I was sure he couldn't hear me, but I still told him about what Claire was doing. Then I fell asleep on the couch right next to him. Days flew by. I'd been washing dishes all day for the past two and a half months. At night, I'd go to the hospital. I would tell my dad all about my day, even though he was in a coma. Then I'd sleep in his room. One night, I woke up to a strange sound. <gasps> I looked around to see where it was coming from, but it stopped. After a while, I heard it again. It sounded like, it sounded like someone was snapping their fingers. I stared at my dad's fingers waiting. Then I saw him snapping his left fingers. He snapped them three times. It was obvious that my dad was trying to communicate with me. I was so happy, <laughs> I jumped up and danced. <laughs> Nothing could have made me happier. Soon, I noticed something. My dad wasn't randomly snapping his fingers. He was doing it a certain number of times. He even stopped once in a while and started again. At that moment, I figured out that he was trying to tell me something. I got a piece of paper and began to take note of the number of times he snapped his fingers. First, he did it three times. Snap, snap, snap. He stopped for a while. Then he snapped them 12 times. Then he stopped again. He snapped once and then took a break again. I was waiting with bated breath, holding a pen in my hand. He continued to snap his fingers nine more times. He stopped and then snapped them 18 times. Short break, then five snaps. He finally stopped and didn't snap them again for the rest of the night. I stared at the numbers I wrote down. Three, 12, one, nine, 18, and five. I had no idea what was going on. The next day I told Chef Lorenzo about what had happened. He was very happy to hear my dad was showing signs of recovery. I showed him the numbers I wrote down. He looked at them for a long time. After a while, he said, shaking his head desperately, he may be doing this unconsciously and we're trying to make meaning out of it. I thought he might be right, but later that day, I realized my dad was conscious because he began snapping his fingers again. And when I counted, he had been repeating the same numbers from before. He snapped his fingers three times at first, then another 12 times. I counted all of them and jotted them down. At the end of the night, I realized that he had been repeating the same six numbers. In the meantime, things weren't looking up for the restaurant. The staff wasn't happy at all with my stepmom because she was always there, bossing them around. She was constantly telling everyone how to do their business and giving wrong orders. That's why she usually fought with Chef Lorenzo. That night, Lorenzo came with me to the hospital. He told my dad what happened and complained to him about Claire. My dad obviously couldn't reply to him verbally because he was in a coma, but suddenly, he started snapping his fingers again. Lorenzo counted the snaps with me. 
When he realized the numbers were still the same ones from before, Mamma Mia! The boss is definitely trying to tell me something! He screamed. Suddenly his eyes started getting bigger. Are these, could these be, oh, could these be the Powerball numbers? For Powerball, you pick six numbers, and if they are the lucky numbers, then you win the jackpot! He yelled. He wrote these six numbers down on a piece of paper. I looked it up online. The jackpot for Powerball is $80 million this week. The drawing is tonight. We are rich, Rosa. We'll get $40 million each when we hit the jackpot, he said excitedly. I was staring at my dad surprised. Were these really this week's winning numbers at Powerball? But how did my dad know about this? I fell asleep while thinking about this. I woke up to the sound of the phone. It was Lorenzo calling. He sounded sad. These aren't Powerball numbers. I got my hopes up for nothing, he said. I was smiling when I hung up the phone. My dad had been trying to tell us something really important, and I was going to find out what it was no matter how hard. At that moment, he began snapping his fingers again. I was surprised when I counted them because he did it 16 times. He waited for a while and then began snapping them again, 15 times to be exact. He snapped them for a long time that night, stopping once in a while and starting again. And finally, he stopped snapping altogether. The room was quiet. I checked the numbers, 16, 15, 9, 19, 5, 4. He took a break after that, then snapped them 13 and five times respectively. I wrote down all of these sequences one after the other. 3, 12, 1, 9, 18, 5. 16, 15, 9, 19, 15, 5, 4, 13, 5. I looked at them for a long time. My dad's breath had become audible. Then I knew that he was as excited as I was while he was waiting for me to solve the puzzle. Suddenly, I was illuminated. Of course! I shouted. I could turn these numbers into letters. You could almost hear my heartbeat in the room. I wrote down the whole alphabet on the paper. I gave every letter its corresponding number in the alphabet. The third letter was C. The twelfth was L. The first was A. When I finished writing the first six numbers, it was a familiar name. Claire, my stepmom. I'd solved the puzzle. My heart was about to stop. I began to look at the corresponding letters to the numbers in the second sequence. The sixteenth letter was P. The fifteenth was O. The ninth was I. I could hardly believe it when I was finished with all the letters. The word was poisoned. There were only two numbers in the final sequence, 13 and 5, M and E, me. I almost fainted when I read the whole sentence. Claire poisoned me. I solved it. My stepmom had poisoned my dad. Apparently the poison she gave him had affected his nervous system and put him in a coma. I hugged my dad, feeling elated. Daddy, I can't believe she put you through all this. I just can't believe it, I said, crying softly. I called Lorenzo right away. Oh my, I totally messed up with the Powerball thing. We need to go to the police now. I'm coming to the hospital, he said. We went to the police station with Chef Lorenzo. We told the chief of police everything. This is a pretty unbelievable story, but trying won't hurt. We'll take your stepmom in for questioning. If she really did it, she'll confess. <laughs> Amateurs don't stand a chance with us, he said. Claire did indeed confess everything she had done, just like the chief of police predicted. She poisoned Dad to take over the restaurant. She used a poison she bought off the dark web. I'm testing a new dish for the menu. Would you like to try it and tell me what you think? She said to him while serving him the dish she put the poison into. The poison spread all over Dad's body and shut down his nervous system, putting him into a coma. When the doctors found out about the poison, they treated my dad with the right kind of antidote. A few days later, he opened his eyes. He smiled when he <laughs> saw me by his bed. My sweet angel, you saved my life and got that murderous woman caught, he said. I asked him how he was able to snap his fingers while in a coma. He smiled. After a while, I began hearing what was going on around me, but I wasn't able to open my eyes. The only things I could move were two fingers. I figured I could communicate with you that way. I had to trust you. You solved the puzzle. You're smart, just like your mom. I'm sure she would be so proud of you if she was alive, he said. 
My dad is doing great right now. He's back running the restaurant. I went back to school, but I'm still running to the restaurant every day after school. However, I'm not a dishwasher anymore. I help Chef Lorenzo in the kitchen. He's the best chef I know, and he's teaching me all the secrets of his profession. Claire is still being tried for attempted murder. I'd always felt that she wasn't a nice person, but I never could have guessed she was this evil. Thankfully, she'll spend a long time behind bars for what she's done and have a lot of time on her hands to regret it.